Okay, so it's 6.03 on November the 14th, 2022. I'd like to open the meeting of the Woodbury Select Board. And the first thing I'll do is call for any adjustments that we have to the Select Board agenda. Uh, we have Tim Appleton who's um, sent an email to the Select Board uh, because it goes through Robin and uh, didn't get to us until today. We still were able to put him on the agenda because the uh, Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department uh, canceled out. So okay. we can hear Tim when we're done with the treasurer's and the clerk's report. Sounds great. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have one adjustment to the agenda, which is to hear from Tim Appleton. Um, I do have... Um Regarding the um, property line between the town and the, and the fire department, I do have. Um, uh, I just wanted to ask Diana some questions about it, so it's not really a discussion. I'd like to be able to look at the um, the actual surveys and the old maps or anything yeah, that you have, just so I have a better understanding of the when situation. When they canceled, I did not bring my file. So yeah, no, that's okay. But, but um, we can do that. But though. maybe before the next meeting when we right. have, will meet with them, I'd like to have a better yeah. sense of what's happening. Now, Michael. Oh. And I, I don't need to look at it right now. I don't want to hold up the meeting. But. I could not find an email where you made changes to this. Oh. So maybe if you remember what they were, you could just write them in there. Or if they were substantial, I can okay. we can just hold that for another two okay. weeks. Yeah, the, um, I can, w when we vote to approve the meetings, I can tell you it was mostly with uh, uh, some facts and statements about the, um, the SALT highway. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what this, where is that? Room report continued. Uh, huh, I don't even see it in here. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I could make those changes right now and write them in and give it back to you if you'd like. Thank you. Okay. Okay, any other adjustments to the published agenda for today's select board meeting? No. Okay, uh, we are open for public comment. Hearing none. Uh, Ms. Durkee, would you please give us the, oops, excuse me. Right, yeah. <coughs> I apologize. Um, we have to approve bills and payroll orders. Um, we'll do these immediately after the meeting and submit them to you directly. Okay. Okay. Um, and we have to approve the minutes from the October 24th meeting and the November 7th special meeting. The, uh, if you could take a minute to read these, I just did the special meeting minutes, Michael today and I don't, oh uh, well, okay, I don't know if I, okay, oh, you know okay. what I'm talking about. if I sent them to you, you probably didn't get a chance, so if you could look those over. <clears throat> so um, for the October 24th um, meeting, there were some, um, uh, in the initial town highway report, um, I did send some uh, corrections to Diana, um, and I'm trying to I th let's see, it was partly, so um, I'm just going to read through it. Um, so Michael began an update about the road salt purchase challenges for this upcoming year. The town has been si buying salt through Dubois Construction in Montpelier, but the company was purchased by Barrett Trucking. And it is not clear whether they will be distributing salt this year. So I did cross out that last phrase. It was definitely clear that they will be distributing salt this year. But it wasn't at the time of the meeting. Uh, no, it was. Mm -hmm. It was. But oh. we were still trying okay. to find out if we could get a better price somewhere else. Okay. So that that statement is incorrect. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And then last year, uh, we through Dubois and King and American 
Uh, rock salt, we paid $71 a ton, not $77. Um, and then the proposed price from uh, Barrett Trucking um, was $88 a ton. And we had a scheme of perhaps getting having a contract with American Road Salt after you know, I had talked to them and they had a much better price available, but uh, with the, with the um, demise of Dubois Construction, they have no Vermont connection to distribute the salt. So, um, but that didn't work out. Um, so that, that was another option that we weren't able to um, follow. Um, and that's the gist of it. I don't. I mean, I I did have the changes written out, but um, I don't know. We could we could still approve this. I mean, a, you don't have to. Um, yeah. Or I could I could redo the changes and send it to you again. Okay. Well, or just find your email where you sent it to me before. Okay. All right. I'll send it again. Then we can sign them next week. Yeah. We can. Weeks. Yeah. It's yeah. not a. Okay. I mean, it, it's nothing major. Um, mm -hmm. It's just. A, well, if there are already comments and we do need to make adjustments based on those statements, okay. then let's wait. Okay, all right. Let's and and we, will, we will review the October 24th, 22 meeting um, minutes uh, again at our next meeting and sign them at that time. Uh, so we need to look at our November 7th special support board meeting, mm -hmm. which was an executive session. I just want you to make sure that the last two paragraphs hmm. were it's okay to say those outside of the executive session because I believe that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed yeah. to do that. Yeah, we made any decisions. Whatever we decided on. Yep. Yeah, yeah th this looks good to me. I can't think of anything else. Nope. Uh, so at this point, I'll read them into the record. Well, you can just sign this. And we're in agreement. Okay. Correct? Mm -hmm. But they do, they, it does have to be read into the record, doesn't it? No. No? Okay. We don't even know. Okay. <laughs> they will be in the record. They will be in the record. Okay. So, so there's one to sign. We agree. So it's all signed. Clean copy. That one. That's a clean copy. And also for you two, um, not for the agenda, but just. Uh, to look over, you want to look over this letter, Michael? Yeah, yeah I did read it quickly, and I read it. I, I, I read it. I read it. Oh, well, oh. And I had no, I had no, nothing that I needed to. You got? I sent this to you already. Okay. Yep. <laughs> well, then I don't have a clean copy. I just have the draft copy, so I'll okay. bring one next time. Good. And then we'll make sure that Tim gets a copy of it. Right. Which is actually once it's once it's signed in a record, that's the most important part of it. Right. Um, especially, and Alfie should have a copy of it as well. There's one for Robin. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Okay, so at this point, we are waiting to approve the modified minutes of the October 24th, 22 meeting, pending adjustments. The November 7th special meeting has been submitted to the town clerk. And now it is time for Mrs. Turkey, if you don't mind, the town clerk's report. Well, the election went very smoothly mm -hmm. compared to other towns. We mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was a walk in the park. <laughs> Just for the record, can you say what the total number was? The total number of registered voters that Woodbury has mm -hmm. on election day was 742. Mm -hmm. And of that 742, 480 voted. Mm -hmm. Two, and out of the 480, 291 were absentee ballots. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Mm -hmm. and Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Do you want to know who got Justice of the Peace? Sure, it can take any information you want to give us. It was Mary Jane Jemmy, Susan Stitely, Jane Nall Lorendo, mm -hmm. Monty Shatney, and 
if I won't pronounce her name right, Natalia Zong. Yep, you pronounced it right. Oh, phew. <laughs> <laughs> and one other thing I wanted to mention is that on the clerk's email listing that's going around was a lot of conversation about the barcodes that were on your ballots and your envelopes. Mm. Mm -hmm. If you happen to notice those when you got your absentee ballots. Mm -hmm. And what that was was for the mailing company that they used. Mm -hmm. So the right ballot got into the right envelope. Uh -huh. Okay. It didn't have any personal information on it other than that barcode said it went to Robin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. So there were so the people who were concerned about the lack of anonymity were yes, but not they were satisfied then that that had no no it's not your personal barcode. <laughs> I, yeah, I never noticed that tattooed on. <laughs> And we have started getting requests in for um, appropriations for the town meeting. Yeah, town meeting. Seven of them so far. Mm -hmm. so far. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we have one that has to do a petition. Who's that? Mm -hmm. The senior center. Really? Mm -hmm. yep. Twin Valley. They want more. Yeah, they're going from $1,000 to $1,500. Oh. Okay. So I sent them back the information that they needed to do for mm -hmm. the petition and all of that. Mm -hmm. And then the only other thing I have is the list of roads that the mountain tamers right. want permission to use. And as they stated on their email, it's the same roads that were used last year. Do you want to just approve that now under the town clerk's report, or should we take it up as a separate item? It's been fairly consistent in the past mm -hmm. in terms of their request. We haven't, that I know of, had a lot of complaints about their treatment mm -hmm. of the terrain. Um, it seemed like a fairly reasonable reasonable group with a reasonable approach mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah they are based on based on previous experience um, I have no problem putting it up to a vote immediately yeah and the sections of road that they use are basically connecting them from one trail trail to, to another. another so um, yeah. it's fairly limited yeah. in terms of their actual use of the roads I'm surprised though that they say the following are for trail access only by local residents help well who's gonna know <laughs> Right. But anyways, that's what they try to do. That makes sense. Um, I just have one question for Chuck about this. I know last year um, Greg has had an issue with a section of the Cabot Road that they use. And I know you guys met to try to figure that out. And mm. I'm remembering that nothing got figured out. or Well, it's they had some work done this year. They're going to okay. change it. Uh -huh. For the most part, they're going to go up. But they're still going to come out in the same place. Mm-hmm. But I think you're going to cross on across the road on the Tom Brooks and go up that side. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's what Danny Hale told me last time I talked to him. Okay, yeah. great. Do you have any reservations about that group using the roads other than what we've talked about? Mm -hmm. no. Do you have a copy of this or do you want one? Yeah, that other stuff. Okay. <coughs> Well, I guess I'll make a motion that we approve this yeah, we'll second request that. for plow and highway use by snowmobiles for the upcoming winter. I heard a second from Michael Gray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Unanimous. Mr. Drake. Is it okay just to reply to, the, to their emails and it was approved, or do you want an actual? letter that goes up with the sled boards on. I think we'd be happy with that. I mean, it will be in the minutes if they need anything more formal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm comfortable with you sending a direct response. Okay. That was approved by the select board. And if they have questions, they come right back to us. Okay. Uh, okay, Mrs. Turkey, anything else for no, our town clerk's report? That's what I have. Okay, terrific. Okay, so um, 
Randy Smith is absent, so we do not have a town treasurer's report, but we do have um, all of our bills and payroll orders to review, and we can talk about those directly with Randy Smith if but he still wants us be. to do this tax abatement. Mm -hmm. um, so the uh, statement here is to approve tax abatement for Kyle Neal property under subchapter 6, corrections 1, grand list after return 4261, correcting omission from the grand list when real or personal estate is omitted from the grand list by mistake or an obvious error is found. The listers, with the approval of the select board, and quote, so <laughs> end quote, um, this will reduce the grand list by $2,830.62. Does anybody know how or why this happened? Is it, well, it because it, of the it, house burning yeah, down? Or? That's yeah, that's it. Yeah. House well, burned down. Mm -hmm. We so still haven't come back to request an abatement for the second half of last year. Last year, right. But this is an abatement that the, the uh, listers could have noticed mm -hmm. and didn't. And did not. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the tax abatement for. Kyle Neal property. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So we have a unanimous vote to do a tax abatement for the Kyle Neal property of $2,830.62. Essentially, there's no longer a functioning structure on the property. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not totally true at this <laughs> point. Um, <laughs> Sort of half true, half true, maybe. Yeah, and then there's a little more to it. Than but anyway, this, but yeah, that's the structure that was the house is gone. The house yeah. is yeah. is now gone. Um, okay. That, other than bills and payroll, are everything that we need for uh, Miss Smith. Yeah. Her list. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, it is probably a good time for us to invite Tim to bring up his concerns. Okay. Well, thank you for placing me on the agenda so quickly. Um, I reached out to this report on Friday um, about the ongoing situation with one of my neighbors on the Ainsworth Road known as the, the Tanya Daigle residence. And I was home Friday um, getting ready for winter when I heard a machine down at the house running. And so I went to take a look. Um, I think Michael and Diana are aware of the history of what's mm -hmm. occurred here. I'm not sure if, if Chris is up to snuff. Reasonably uh, so. This has been an ongoing situation for almost 10 years now. M more than 10 years, but um, not has intensified since the Dangles have bought it. But for me, this has been an ongoing situation since mm -hmm. about 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. So my shared property line, which um, was difficult to, to know exactly where it was because the line went through an open piece of ground that didn't have any trees. Mm -hmm. um, the boundary trees that did lay on the boundary were cut by the previous uh, owner of the house, mm -hmm. uh, Nate Fisk. When he subsequently reneged on the mortgage and left, the house was abandoned until Tanya bought it. Um, so I uh, I know the board is aware of concerns that Mike McGlynn has brought forth regarding, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on around there. Um, you know, my boundary does extend across Route 14 onto mm -hmm. Marie Catton's property as well. Mm -hmm. so Didn't know this that. has been quite mm -hmm. going on for a while. So I paid to have a survey done. And we identified the survey, Sunwise Survey, and did the work and completed it. Um, we ended up putting some monuments on the corners. There was one existing, um, but they went and put one on Route, 14, uh, on Route 14. 
And then with assistance from the surveyors, I placed cedar post on the line between the two monuments. Um, essentially survey pins. So how, often, how often were those posts? How? How many? Like, uh, I mean, I every I put 10 six feet or something? One's like probably missing yeah, yeah. now. Um, so when I heard the machines, a machine going on on Friday, I went down there and Wayne Tallman was the contractor who was doing the work. Um, didn't know what was going on. I just wanted them to understand that there was an adjacent survey right there. Um, my survey comes, I think, within 19 feet of the back end of the house. So. Mm -hmm. um, to me, when I, and when I approached, uh, several mem members of the Catton family were looking after the existing spring, which is just a cement tiles, um, mm. and looking over that. Mm. Um, so I approached them and let them know about the line, which I had assumed someone had, would have told them they knew the survey work was going on. Um, this isn't a big secret. So um, when after we got done, the, you know, the conversation jumped around quite a bit. Um, but when I tried to explain where the line was, the reason for the cedar post, and then proceeded to ask about their intentions for using the well. Um, they proceeded to say that they had claim to it, um, which they do not, and that's well established by the Agency of Natural Resources, and there is nothing in the deed that grants any water rights to that house from my property. So how did the Agency of Natural Resources get involved? Uh, I think you know the answer to that. If well, Carl Fuller was involved because um, he's the wastewater engineer mm -hmm. in the district. Mm -hmm. And because of Mike McGlynn's development permit for mm -hmm. wastewater and septic. Mm -hmm. And if the Daggles were going to, you know, that would have affected his permit based on where their water system was or mm -hmm. is claimed to be, mm -hmm. as well as their, their wastewater. I've also was contacted by Chase and Chase, who is the engineering firm mm -hmm. that was hired by the Daggles. And they tried to extract information from me about what I knew about the site. Um, and I asked them to reciprocate, which of course they didn't. <laughs> um, so the long and short of it, without dragging this out, is my intention is to ask the town what they know regarding any enforcement proceedings that are going on there. Mm -hmm. um, and Marie Catan, or Catton, uh, excuse me, indicated that she needed to take pictures for you, specifically, Diana, um, for whatever compliance is in the works. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm at a loss <coughs> of really knowing mm -hmm. what the town's involvement is here. Um, and I, my intention is to, con, you know, is to protect my property. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What's theirs is theirs, and what's mine is mine. And there is no deed of rights to that house, and they have to understand that. And if they do try to claim that well, um, I think it has implications for Mike McGlynn's development plans across the road mm -hmm. in the Angel Field because of the overshadow notice for potable water and mm -hmm. wastewater. Um, yeah, now that you say that, I do recall that Mike came here one time with a letter that he got, and he was yeah, quite he's surprised. He's been here yeah. several yeah. times, actually. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. He has, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I believe the town has had a hand with the Captain family for a number of years. We have, mm -hmm. yeah. And so I would like to know, first of all, if the Tallmans were hired by the town, or as part of any enforcement issues either? Is there an Well, I can tell you what the enforcement, I mean, the, the previous select board before I was on it, <laughs> they did decide to take this enforcement, the zoning enforcement, to court. There is a piece of our zoning ordinance that says that you can't have um, unregistered vehicles and miscellaneous junk around in view of the public highway. 
And so that's basically what we've been trying to do is uh, there's been several court hearings um, uh, started during COVID. So there weren't like hearings where people actually showed up, but uh, um, there's been, um, you know, at one point Tanya's ex came and got a bunch of the vehicles. So that was an improvement that was reported to the court, but they kept, you know, they gave another month and another month and the town hasn't, the, you know, I think we talked about this maybe at our last meeting, hasn't decided what we would, the town wants except for the place to be cleaned, cleaned up, but we okay. haven't taken any steps. I've been taking pictures along there regularly to, yeah. to so, tell the uh, attorney what What's so, the so the only thing the town's really been doing is is hassling them over the zoning ordinance, zoning ordinance. for, for yeah. junk vehicles and junk. We haven't we have been in contact with um, the enforcement and compliance department of ANR for um, uh, you know the fact that they were people were living in the house without a source of water and without a septic system. So and that's all kind of under the state's purview so the town really hasn't gotten involved with that except to try to be aware of what's been happening um, and uh, um, yeah so that's the only thing the town really is is doing with that property is trying to get the junk cleaned up or at least have a fence around it if, if nothing else so the town is not acting on the state's behalf with regard to any enforcement or mm -hmm. In no, the in state doesn't. And, and why did Marie suggest that she needed to send pictures to you? you yeah, I've like I've I've been taking pictures of like I said. <clears throat> every time there's a court hearing coming up and the attorney wants to know what's up, I go take some pictures. And this is. The but I didn't ask her who? to take uh, the for, the for the town. For the town. But this is about the the, the junk. Morning. The the junk. Okay. <clears throat> Whether the you know, so several so times. It's important to know that. Um, Nate Fisk, who was the person that reneged, mm -hmm. was the last owner of the house and reneged on his mortgage and, and flew down, thought that he owned to the book mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. cleared the trees and deposited a lot of junk between mm -hmm. the house and the book, mm -hmm. which has now been determined to be mostly on my on property. Your property yeah. And that's been a source of anxiety for a long time for me to try to figure mm -hmm. out how I could clean that up. Mm -hmm. Because my only viable option is to, to access that part of my property is through the day bowl. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I've been unable to do that because mm -hmm. of the contentious issue of, you know, the nature of, mm -hmm. of how they were handling everything. And mm -hmm. Had a couple of confrontations with, with them mm -hmm. over the course of time. So this last one, when I had the conversation with them, um, it started off congenial enough, and they had actually offered to start cleaning up that portion of my property that had a lot of still debris and litter on it. Mm -hmm. And I thanked them several times mm -hmm. and emphasized it, that I was very grateful that they would consider doing that. Um, however, the sticking point was the well, mm -hmm. and one of the members of the family um, actually con confronted me about it mm -hmm. and you know got in my face and mm -hmm. CF forward and told me to get off and get out of here even though I was standing on my own property mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm kind of sick and tired of that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's nothing to do with the town but if there's any leverage for them to clean up that portion of my property um, as they're cleaning up their own I, you know that would be great um, you know, I'm willing to do my part to help out or, you know, to some reasonable degree deal with the cost of, of that cleanup. Um, but, you know, I know in certain terms, is that well go with that house? And, you know, that, that well was dug when nobody was looking. It's just a shallow, dug mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. They could very easily move it onto their side of the property. Um, how the, however, having said that, I do not know how that affects Mike McGlynn's you know, right. permit process. Mm -hmm. if, right. uh, if there, I was told in dealings between Mike McGlynn and Carl Fuller from DC that they needed a drilled well. Mm -hmm. It couldn't be a surface well. 
Yeah. I don't know. That's so that's basically just kind of a, there might have been a little seepage or a spring there and they just kind of dug a hole and put some cement tile in. And well, it's, it's been, people have been living in that house, like you said, maybe 10 years, up until maybe 10 years ago uh, when the last owner left and they've been using that that water source. Yeah, that, that water, time. they might have been using it. There were actually several water sources that they were mm -hmm. trying to use on my property. In mm -hmm. fact, another smaller mm -hmm. one with a black water pipe that went for some considerable distance mm -hmm. up onto my hill, across mm -hmm. the ground, across the brook, and into a back window. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and subsequently I also found out that a portion of their existing septic is on my land, and the outflow mm -hmm. does go on to it and into the brook and into mm -hmm. the Kingsbury branch. There is a septic system, an existing septic? Existing septic system. Where is it? Yeah, it's, I don't know exactly it's the back where it is, the front. it's in the front, somewhere along the brook. In the front part, front of the house? The front part yeah. of the house, yeah. huh. which I was told apparently is going to be the, where the replacement septic is going to be. I'm assuming this is all going on with state oversight, town mm -hmm. oversight, I'm, I'm not sure. That's why I'm here before you, is yeah. to just ask and share with me what you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that I can decide the next steps myself. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think it could have a septic system in there without having the design on it now. Right. You know, so they were, um, I think when uh, Chase and Chase went out there, it was when that program first started or ANR got quite a lot of money to help people repair failed septic systems. And, um, but that program has, been kind of on hold because they got overwhelmed with applications and uh, I think that at that point um, nothing would be yeah the, the next step would be for them to design a system uh, but I don't know I mean that supposedly is paid for by the state also if the program was up and running mm -hmm. but uh, so is the DC enforcement officer involved he is he's been yes. there yeah and has, is, he ta is he the one that's documenting the cleanup, or is that just because it's a town zoning ordinance that, that really the yeah, chunk is a separate issue? The yeah, really. The town is overseeing the cleanup, um, but as far as the water... Who's, and the, who's overseeing it? Uh, well, we've been paying a lawyer to help us with the court hearings. And yeah, but he ain't overseeing the cleanup. No, he's no, not overseeing the cleanup, but, yeah. but the fact that we have a court... Um, whatever you call it, or I noticed a violation that's going through the courts. That's basically the town overseeing the cleanup. Um, yeah. and the fact, Who's in direct oversight of the cleanup? So they, they have to clean it up, or the court proceedings will continue. Nobody's overseeing the cleanup. That's not. It's up to know, them to clean it up. At some point, we'll report to the to the court whether we think they've complied with the order. Um, I, yeah, most of this stuff is still on email. I don't have well, it on the work enough, but. that Wayne Tallman was doing, um, he, they had already placed Phil on my side of the line. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they actually had sub, three good sized boulders that they stacked up on top of each other like a snowman. Mm -hmm. It was actually on my side of the line. Mm -hmm. line. Mm -hmm. And they asked me if they could leave it there. I mean, if someone's not directly there, and it's a good thing that I went down there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because this is the kind of thing that's going to happen. They're going to take what they want, mm -hmm. right. and you know, I I have you know the right to protect my own property. So I have a question for you, Tim. Did you ever share with them or give them a copy of the survey that you had so that they actually know where the line property line is? Um, I filed it in the town land records. They knew that the survey was going on. Mm -hmm. I did not give them a direct copy of it, uh -huh. uh, but it is accessible to them. I know they have to go and look at it, though, which it might be well within their right, and it's mm -hmm. no, no. and it's perfectly. But it's you, not my responsibility. But you said you marked it. just as much as it is their responsibility to come to me right. and tell me that they're going to start doing work right up against my boundary line right. with a machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you, but you did mark it. Mark it. I mean, they pointed it is out. marked, and I'm. They pointed quite, it out to me when I was there. Surprised that it's still there. If they're still there, I thought they mm -hmm. would pull them out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But they, to their credit, they only, mm -hmm. I think, one of so them dismissed So I went there Friday because I saw a bunch of trucks and I was trying to report to the lawyer because the next hearing was today. Um, and I met the nephew that who has been authorized to work on the place for Tanya, who's moved out. And uh, it looked like over by that pile of rocks, there were some piles, but it almost looked like they were debris that was going to be taken out. Those were, those, yeah, they were just... I'm not sure, because once the conversation became confrontational... He left. Everybody he left. left, yeah. I was told that Tanya is no longer living there. Mm -hmm. She broke up with her ex mm -hmm. or whomever. <laughs> Um, and that the nephew is now has intentions mm -hmm. to move into the house. But Tanya still owns that property. Oh, that's there. right. So that's Tanya true. is still liable for, for what's going on on that that's property. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the problem becomes is you have so many different members of the family involved in making decisions over this <laughs> one building. Mm -hmm. Who is the right person and who is ultimately responsible? Oh, and the whole cast remember. of characters is, is essentially changed down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's still Tanya. Except, yeah, except yeah if she'd wash her hands of it, by somebody who may not even, may or may not even be a member of the family, I do not know the man's name who confronted mm. me. Mm. Yeah, there were but, several, several young men down there when I stopped. Yes. That was after yeah. you had been there. And, and I did see... The details of yeah, that? Yeah, they told me their side of the story. <laughs> and, uh, and I get a look, get to look at the degree on your side. But that's not, none of that is visible from the town road, so that's really not part of the enforcement action. Hmm. Not the current one. Right. <laughs> not this current So even though all action. that trash was a result of, of that, I, I have no recourse for dealing with that through the town's enforcement. Yeah, I don't... I mean, much of that refuge mm -hmm. isn't really visible from the yeah. town road, Diana. Right. I mean, there's a whole... I had Until never now that they've been out the back out of the house. made it visible. Mm -hmm. The refuge in the brook from the previous owner. No, it in the brook. Well, adjacent to the brook. The brook. There's yeah. tires and there's refuge pretty much scattered mm -hmm. in there. And mm -hmm. they had a three-sided shed that they were throwing the garbage in there, the household garbage, and the bears got into it oh. and scattered it all over the hillside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All okay. I'm asking for is the property line to be respected, the well to be acknowledged, mm -hmm. that they do not have rights to it. I, you know, and I think someone's going to have to hire a lawyer to figure that out. But it's, I mean, the property line is established. No, I mean, uh, the, the well. Oh, excuse me. Now, Whether there's they're, they're going to have to hire a lawyer. Because I've already established that it's on my property. But you've there established that you think it's not in their deed? I'm pretty confident that there's nothing in the deed because I think several people have made title searches to find it. Hmm. Including Chase and Chase mm -hmm. and others, I believe mm -hmm. Carl Fuller and his staff looked mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. quite hard for mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and I was told that they could not find it, and I was actually told that I actually could go and remove it. Mm -hmm. And so, in, or in order to avoid any further confrontation with them, and also not to initiate any re re retaliatory action against me, I left it there for now. Mm -hmm. If they want to use that tile, that's fine. Um, take it out and put it on the wrong side of the line. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. essentially what you're telling me then is that is that the town is really limited to the cleanup of the junk and that even though a portion of that junk lies on my side of the line from the previous landowner. From the previous landowner, which the same junk is from the previous landowner. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of it is. Yeah. Do I have any recourse through the town's actions to be able to get that cleaned up? And if that's the case, mm -hmm. they're not. They're probably not going to give me permission to access that junk through their property to get it cleaned up. What is it? Looks like some. It's some, a mixed match site. Some kind of. I mean, you were there on the site. You saw. Yeah, but it. I, I just saw across the. Uh -huh. you know, I, well, I they they said that it was some. Uh, it. Is, huh? Is, he probably hasn't been over and picked it up. Looked at it. It's yeah. Shit looks, shit. They said it was some. It's, it's all and kinds of like junk. It's aluminum siding mm -hmm. and gutters and tires and mm -hmm. 
there were remnants of a burn barrel, several burn mm -hmm. barrels, uh, you name it. Mm -hmm. So, I guess I would ask that if there's any leverage for the town to help me get that cleaned up, I, mm -hmm. I would appreciate well, it. I'm thinking of Green Up Day, if there was a way, I would be glad mm -hmm. to be part of a crew to help you clean that up. Um, if there's a way that we can get it into a, a truck or something, um, and then we could just, you know, it wouldn't cost you anything to have it hauled to the dump. The town would, would um, it would just be just part of what we would collect on, on Green Up Day. Um, and I think we could put together a crew to, to clean that up. We once did that up on the quarry road the quarry for road. an illegal dump. Okay. Um, we had Will the they allow you on the property? Well, well that's um, a good it's, on his it's on his property. We have to you access have to, it. How are you going to get to his property? Are you going to walk to the brook? Well, I'm thinking it must be some land there between the brook and their property line. You could walk from the highway. How far is it? You Not could come far. in from Route 14, mm -hmm. and you can come in with the shared boundary with my, uh, Mike and Dylene Richardson, but you no, have to down. go completely around the Dagle property. Mm -hmm. um, it would be through alders and wet ground mm -hmm. yeah. across mm -hmm. the book. And mm -hmm. It would be fairly mm -hmm. difficult to get mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. And then coming directly from Town Farm, it's a steep hill um, yeah. on my side. Yeah, how far? Do, I mean, it's not that far down, I've noticed, now that the leaves aren't on the trees. But it is a climb. It's a, yeah, it's a climb. It's a, it's and a we steep. could get a machine close to it, a truck. Um, but it still would be a lot of climbing up and down. You'd have mm -hmm. to constantly cross the brook and then go up and down. And mm -hmm. It's a short, but it's a fairly steep grade. But mm -hmm. from Route 14? This is up coming from Town from the house side. I know. My house side. Okay, but to get to it from Route 14, is it also up and down? Or? You would be on the side, like it would be know, flat. right where the brook comes. It's yeah. right where the brook is behind the house. Mm -hmm. It flows mm -hmm. underneath Route 14 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. into the King Bay mm -hmm. Branch. So you would have to navigate that book. Mm. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then you could come in from the other side, further on, on the Ainsworth mm -hmm. Road. Mm -hmm. um, but we'd have to clear a path mm -hmm. around the property. Have mm -hmm. they indicated that they are no longer willing to work with me? No. I don't know. Yeah, we haven't heard anything from them. We have, I, we have I heard. just said you had a conversation with them. Oh, yeah. and they told you their version of the story. Yeah. The, and we walked around the back of a... I had never been around the south side of the building. There's a lot of stuff back there, but it's not uh, within view, so it wasn't part of our enforcement action. And well, they, it's in the wetlands, wasn't it? Oh, I know that's not part of our enforcement action. <laughs> well, it's just, I would it's just the state would be ready, ready to come and up and enforce that. And well, and state, having the state do anything <laughs> to help out is it's like, actually kind of... It's, mm -hmm. it's a fallacy. Well, what I'm they trying really, to understand is exactly the beginning and the end of what the town would deem satisfactory cleanup, because most mm -hmm. of it isn't visible from Route 14. No, it's visible from the town road, though. Yeah. And even on my side, it's visible on, from the town. But I mean, the town, the, the Ainsworth Road is a town road. Right. Right. So, so. Uh, most of it is visible from, from that road, but yeah. you're saying that the cleanup is only limited to the Dago property only? Even though the, the junk that's on my side of the line is a result of the Dago property? And well, like I ownership? said, it's a, the zoning ordinance says uh, miscellaneous junk that's within the view of a public highway. I don't have a copy of it here. Right. But, um, I do actually have a copy of it. And who determines the view? You, whether you can see it. Right, this right. would be the and zoning so administrator. The zoning, admi the, the zoning administrator is, is who decides it. Here, <laughs> and I'll let you find it. I mean, what I'm afraid you're going to tell me is that you're going to limit the town's authority to at the boundary line, and that still leaves me with a problem of trying to get that jump cleaned up. Well, I'm I'm willing to help you get it somewhere so that we can get rid of it on Green Up Day, and I could I probably it. find some other people that would. Right, I'd be willing to help, help as well. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of people willing to help, but mm -hmm. um, I have to look back at what what we actually gave. I don't have it in front mm -hmm. of me, mm -hmm. but we actually gave the notice of violation as a notice of violation. Mm -hmm. So would, would the actual work that, that Wayne Palmer is doing now, now that there's additional boulders that are being placed on my property as a result of the cleanup work, 
Do I have no re recourse? You the you have that? all. Re I mean, the town really probably can't help get involved in that situation. But again, hiring, you know, having the lawyer notify them that they have, you know, put that stuff on your property without your permission. It kind of leaves it on them to remove it. I don't think the town really can get involved in uh, that type of property issue between two landowners. No, but the reason the machine is there is because the town mandated that they clean up the place. In any well, district, uh, the re oh well, in, in all districts of the town, any motor vehicle which is not state inspected and all miscellaneous junk must be stored in an enclosed building or placed in a rear yard and screened from view from any public way. That's all we got to go on, and that's what the that's what the uh, uh, court. Uh, enforcement action is about. Yeah, so it doesn't make any so differentiation you, between property boundaries. It just says that there's junk that is I mean, visible from well, the, the But this enforcement action was against the owner of that property. It yeah. wasn't against you or... Right, we didn't give you a notice of violation either. So no, I guess what I'm trying to get at is that the reason the junk is there is from, from that property. I mean, yeah. it's all one. Yeah, you know, yeah, well, we understand just that. Just spelled over on to my side mm -hmm. because the previous owner mm -hmm. thought they owned what they didn't own. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. I've been willing to clean this up for a long time, but just can't seem to get there mm -hmm. and get it cleaned up. And that's what I'm really after. And I, I want them to respect the boundary line. And now, as a result of the machine work that's going on, as mandated by the town, I'm getting additional impacts to my property with placement of boulders that did not belong there. We could contact the person, uh, there was a name mentioned for who was running the excavator or whatever, and tell yeah, them that they the, placed well, he that. Was, uh, he, was, he was a witness to the conversation and right. the confrontation. We, I yeah. think as a town, we can tell that person who put that stuff there that that's not we the Daigle did. property. We didn't hire them. I know, but we they. Them anything? But they're there because the town. So if they agreed to, if they had talked at one time about picking up some of that stuff that's on your side of the, on, on your property. Mm -hmm. If they agreed to work on that, would you let them leave the rocks where they are? I mean, the rocks is just like a little yard sculpture. Are you negotiating on behalf of? Yeah, no, on behalf of is, you. What does this have to do with the town ordinance? I'm, I mean, I don't Okay, well, you keep trying to spread it over onto helping you on your side, so I'm just trying to think of some way that something could be negotiated but would help both I sides. I don't think we need to negotiate anything. Okay, I don't think fine. we're at a point, Diane, okay. to negotiate. Well, whatever. So basically, you want so, so is this done. an ultimatum by you that I for negotiate crying. either from Tim, moving Tim, I don't think they have to. I mean, they have a machine down there; they could fix that <laughs> quite a, quite often, mm -hmm. quite quite quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think the town could ask the person who operates the machine, let them know that the rocks were placed there. It's not the Daigle's property, so. Um, and the landowner has requested that they be moved onto the Daigle property. I think the town could make that call um, mm -hmm. and just make that request. Whether the person would actually do that or not is would be up to them. And if they didn't, then you know the town doesn't have much beyond that that it could do. But we could we could make that call. I'm happy to do that. Um, I don't see how that's um, you know not something that the town. Um, couldn't do to help out this situation um, and from then my point of view anyway I agree completely and then the next step would be to consider how we approach them in terms of cleaning up your property adjacent to theirs by giving us access giving you access to do right. so and because all we're looking for is access briefly across their land to get into something that is on your property but not associated with your problem um, and that can be a, that can be a request. And um, again, it could be shut down by them. What's yeah. that? What's that? You're going to request what? To give us access across their land. To clean up. To them. clean up junk associated with the previous landowner on their associated with their property that has ended up on Tim's land. 
centrally. I'd also like to give them the opportunity to remove that well, otherwise I'll remove it myself. Mm -hmm. So they can use that casing, otherwise it's going to disappear. Mm -hmm. And this isn't really a town's responsibility or concern, but um, well, what I'm not are, intimidated by these folks. Well, what are rights are? And what are rights are a concern? I will so. go down and clean that up, and I will protect that. You know what I pay taxes on, or if I can't adequately deal with it, I will ask for an abatement. My wife, my wife won't even use that side of the property because she's afraid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't have to live that way. Right. Agreed. And but, again, I'm. Um, I'm happy to come and help help you clean that up. Yeah, thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. Yeah, I think that we are willing to help. So, if there's any, if anything else further develops, I, you know, I would I would appreciate being kind of kept in the loop as far as mm -hmm. what's going on down there. Um, do you know at this point if there's going to continue to be machine work? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Have they asked? that the town give their blessing and they're okay that everything is satisfactory at this point in time to meet the town ordinance? No, well, they haven't asked, no. They, well, when will that determination be made? Well, we, they just, we just had court today. Today, and they gave another month. So I was hoping that that would be encouraging to have them continue the cleanup, which they have been doing. Um, whether uh, Tallman is going to come back, I don't know. I have no way of knowing. So his machinery is gone now? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, you know who the person is from A&R. We've talked about him before. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and you, you know, I am frustrated with that whole process from the state for other places in town. It seems to, nothing really seems to come of anything that, um, from the enforcement and compliance people um, for either any property, the property across the road, Marie Catons, you know, they've been working on that for years and it hasn't changed it hasn't much changed. at all. Um, so, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the state really doesn't do much at all to help with any of these situations, it, it, when it, even when it's under their purview. Um, so you know, I'm, I'm kind of frustrated with the state about just what they do to help in these situations, but when it is under their jurisdiction. You and know. sadly, the court also yeah. is not a very good... I mean, all they've been able to do is ask the town to negotiate with the landowner to try to get things fixed. The court's not going to send out somebody to... All they can do is send out an order, maybe a fine. Which won't be paid. Yeah. So, they, so it sounds like, Diana, you have some level of involvement there. You've gone there, you've been corresponding with the folks, mm -hmm. they've insinuated to me that they need to send you pictures. I don't know where At she At some got point, that. you're going to, the town, you're acting on behalf of the town to say, you have now rectified this situation and... D Diana, no Diana's been working with our town lawyer who's overseeing the, overseeing court, case the court case for the notice itself. of violation. She's been the contact person for the, for the, with the, attorney. With the lawyer. That's, yeah. that's where, that's, that's her advice. Michael her and I, the, the attorney asked that we take some more pictures. Michael and I talked about getting together this week and we couldn't manage to find mm -hmm. a time when we could do it at the... Uh, I guess I'm trying and to I understand just what the pictures would do if you have no context at the It fact. shows the court, the, the situation. The progress. It's like... Uh, or, I, non or, or lack or of progress. progress. Right, I, yeah. I, in, the, in the past it's been like one, they got rid of two vehicles and then they brought in another one. And they, yeah. that went on for a couple of months. So, so I would have to report to the attorney that... Uh, yeah. And I, I was initially working with the same attorney, and, and I also took photographs mm -hmm. so that, you know, he had something to show the court mm -hmm. about what the situation what, looked like. How it was developing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a few years of documentation of what, what? that place has looked like. Mm -hmm. And a few months ago, 
the attorney came out, Michael Tarrant, and Bob Martin, the zoning administrator. He and uh, the three of us went over there um, and took a bunch of pictures. Actually, the attorney took the pictures, wrote a long letter to Tanya with the pictures, and um, uh, a, long, a list of, of things that had to be cleaned up. Sheet metal on the far left side of the property, tires and rims, rusted doodle bug truck, truck cap, sheet metal and other items in the fire pit, the purple Jeep with no inspections, the sea do, the green truck behind the house, other junk items including basketball hoop tires, miscellaneous metal, and so on. And that was the, probably not the first correspondence, but that was on August 2nd. Of this year? Of this year. Yeah. Yep. That's the most recent one that we've no, talked about. No. But there is no language that says only on the, only on the property. It just says... It's focused on their property. Even though that junk is visible from the town right of way um, as a result of that ownership. It, it's, it could be our error. Which to, junk? The stuff in the brook. Oh. There's stuff, everything behind the house. It's all one big pile of stuff. It's just my line happening to go through mm. approximately half of it. I guess we don't have a, I don't, I don't, I guess we don't really have a perfect answer for you. Yeah. That's, I mean, we can send you a copy of, of what we sent the attorney. Um, yeah, and I and speaking for myself, I wasn't aware of where the property line was. Um, you might have just look at a uh, spreading a yeah. spread of junk. I can share it with you right now if you would like to mm -hmm. take a look at it. Mm -hmm. um, I have a copy of it. It's also on the town land records. Mm -hmm. I think it. Yeah, I think it'd be easier for us to spend the time on it. Go into the town records and just right. take a peek, as opposed to doing it now. But they did meeting. point out to me that they, you know, one of the markers and they did say that you had told them that the rocks were one foot over on your boundary and well they they went there mm -hmm. that day mm -hmm. and during the result of the mm -hmm. work they put it there mm -hmm. you know it's like i can't mm -hmm. nothing sacred you know mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. I, despite yeah. my best efforts to identify the line and next thing you know as a result of mm -hmm. cleanup work which is mandated by the town i have further encumbrances on the property mm -hmm. And it isn't getting better, it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. On your side, yeah. Mm. I don't think it's thing. getting a lot better around that house. What? It ain't get, hadn't been getting a lot better around that house. It may be, I ain't been up there since I've been up there on this yeah, they took a, yeah, I noticed they took a piece, there's a little entry or something on the front of the house that they took down. There was a bunch of stuff was piled there. and. They replace a piece of roofing. I don't know what they're doing inside. Whether he plans to live there right away. Nobody's been living there for a long time. But. Did they express their intentions to you so well when you had the conversation with them? Oh, yeah. That always comes up, and I say, it has nothing to do with the town, so. Okay, well, that's good to know, because now I know that that's something that's on me to have to deal with. Yeah, the well, the well definitely is something that, that you have to deal with. So the uh, deed says the real property described above is conveyed subject to the following. All easements, covenants, conditions, and restrictions of record all legal zoning, building, and other laws, ordinance, and regulations. But who's to tell what all those easements are? Yeah, I don't know. Do you have a copy of this? What is it, the zoning ordinance? No, this is the, the D. For Daigle. Daigle D. I don't have a copy. You can have this. Thank you. Sure. 
Yeah, my understanding and my sense is that several several of the representatives for the Dago family have looked specifically for the D language and regarding water rights, and they did not find any. And those are professional, that, yes. yeah, not just and the it, family. And it was actually meant, um, a requirement of the wastewater system design um, through DEC. DEC. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because that had a bearing on the wastewater design. Mm -hmm. Where, where the existing water, mm. portable water sources were. Mm -hmm. So whoever did it. the design for Mike did not notice that. It wasn't aware of that. Well, I don't think... Spring tile being there. I don't think anybody knew it was there yeah. because it wasn't legal to begin with. And mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. just, nobody was looking. Someone went in, dug a hole, stuck some tile in there. And I don't think it was used very much because I found an alternative source of water that was further up on my land with black water pipe running across the top of the ground. And, the back of the mm -hmm. and that was done probably by the present owner and, and mm -hmm. whatever parties were involved with them. That wasn't a former, a former owner? It, I believe it was a former, former owner. Former owner? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. but oh. Once the was the pipe split acquired, What's that? Had the pipe split? Like it was frozen? Not that I could tell. A black mm. inch, inch and a half, I guess it was, a one inch pipe. I couldn't tell if it was split or not. You know, and come, it had come apart in sections. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. um, no, I think the Daggles are just assuming that they have certain rights that mm -hmm. they go with the house, and they do not. Yeah, well, it sounds like from what you've done and what you've been told by the, those different engineers that that you're correct in your assumption. assumption. Um, well, yeah, but engineers aren't title searchers. Uh huh. The problem is, I'm going to have to. It's going to be financial expense on my behalf to prove everything when the burden of proof should be on them, mm -hmm. not me. Mm -hmm. Which may be true, but in reality, they probably won't do it. And there's very few enforcement mechanisms that we can actually deal with. It would be a good investment for them if they did and they won because they would have a water source, but they're not going to do it. Not going to do it. I don't think they're going to do it. That water source is never any good. No. The house always had water problems. Oh. Clear back when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. oh. But if they have an approved wastewater system, they must. They must, it must come with a condition for the placement of the water. Usually the what we have permit is issued for wastewater disposal and water and supply. And water supply at the same time. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's actually required. And that's well, public record as well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, but there's no design. There's no design. Yeah, they, no, there's not. Uh, Chase and Chase went out and did some test holes, that's all. There, there's, no, there, there's no approved design that we're aware of. So the existing system is failed. Not designed, it's failed and not designed. Failed and never. Yeah. It's failed and never. Mm -hmm. And it was probably discharge right into the club. That was probably put in there mm -hmm. long before the state mm -hmm. oversaw so saw anything. So yeah. I, I do know that if they before they'll get an approved design, they have to have a water supply. Mm -hmm. They have to. Both. Mm -hmm. They go, they go the water right together. And, and mm -hmm. water system. Mm -hmm. I think that also could potentially conflict with Mike McGlynn's, who has an approved development plan mm -hmm. that involves wastewater and portable water. Right, but on a condition of like this other water source, it sounds like it sounds like that wasn't totally approved because uh, it was the first. Approved. But from my understanding, it is now approved. Officially okay. Approved. Okay. No further do, concerns. I don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, How'd they do that? Pardon me. I wonder how they did that if they raised a concern about the well. Because I believe the, the DEC within. looked into, uh, to a certain extent, I don't know exactly mm -hmm. what they did, but determined that there was no water mm -hmm. um, associated with okay. uh -huh. water. So therefore, Mike's, yeah. Mike's was okay, but. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or Mike has a different supply. Has yeah, a, he has a different, has a different supply. supply. Well, but no, the issue was that the that his, his spring was within the the uh, shield for the septic system on Mike's within property. Uh, yeah, right. Shadowing area or whatever. You know. Which you really don't want. Really. <laughs> Can you inform um, whoever is helping the Daigles try to 
obviously, you know, it sounds like they're getting state help to try to get a septic system in there, and obviously the would seem to me, who doesn't really know a whole lot about this, that they can't really get that until they can prove that they have a, a potable water source. So, I don't think um, that's, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen in the near future. Ryan McCall had been working with Tanya to try to get her to apply for the state program, and she never got her paperwork together. Now. She's gone, so who knows what's going to happen. Right. Can Tim inform um, the people for the state that were trying to help them with that, that they, that the previous water sources to that property are on his property and he's not willing to give them rights to that water? I don't they don't have rights. I can't imagine who, who they would contact. Okay. Well, there must be that. somebody from uh, the state that's there's helping nobody, them. Out. There's nobody helping them with this. Okay. The, uh, like I said, Chase and Chase did some test holes. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Whether they ever got paid for that through the state program, I don't know. Can Tim send Tanya Daigle or the property owners a formal letter saying that you, I do not grant you any access to water on my property, and and then it would would it be in their side of the argument to hire a lawyer to challenge that? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the legal proceedings are. Or I'm not sure either. But we can ask our attorney. Uh -huh. I did ask our attorney today. He said it's, it's, a, it's a private. The well, would, boundary issues and the water yeah. supply issues are not town issues. Right. I well, know they aren't town issues. I'm just trying. Get a hold of Chase and Chase and find out what they did do and didn't do. Could do that. I would think that you should put that much of a foot forward to find out. Mm -hmm. You know, so that Tim would have an idea. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if he had like stand on or not. Mm -hmm. Well, well, we have no. I mean, the reality is that we've got no approved plan. Doesn't exist. Hasn't been filed, as far as anybody knows. But does anybody know if Chase and Chase just flat ass said? There's some stakes. Not going to be able to be approved. Mm -hmm. I, there's some stakes in the front yard. So they are, well, know, I'd be marking where the test holes. That's just right. where the test holes are. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I'm willing to call Chase and Chase. See I if would I can find out from them. But um, be eight place to start. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might not matter to anyone talking to the lawyer. But mm -hmm. it was Derek Evans on Chase and Chase. Derek uh, Evans. Derek, Derek mm -hmm. Evans, eight zero two, two four nine, four zero three two. Three two. Three two. Two. Have you talked to him? What's up? Have you talked to him? He reached out to me to pick my brains about oh. what was going on. Uh -huh. I asked him to reciprocate once he found out, and he did not, of course. Mm -hmm. Once you choose the house, it's played. It's right. Probably, it's probably dead in the water. It's yeah. I think it's. Oh, well, mine too. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm guessing that it's no, not going to happen. Discovered mm -hmm. that they don't have a water supply, so they're done with trying to get a wastewater permit. But then they happen. really can't live there without a dr dr without a drilled well, yeah. or or a functioning septic system. That's a whole nother yeah. level. Yeah. Of yeah. Level, right? yeah, it's a different. We're going to get into it's eventually. A, it's a different thing. So we have other. They, they they go ahead mm -hmm. and try to hook up to that well and claim that that's theirs. Mm -hmm. when they don't have a legal right to it. Um, yeah, and, then and I, I still don't know how that affects the wastewater design either. And well, no, and, and we, and if we, they do that and they don't have a legal right, and you challenge that, then yeah. you know that's again that's mm -hmm. the property owner dispute. Um, which it's not, not really a yeah. not really a town thing. So Tim, I'm sorry if we've frustrated you, but I hope this was at least a little. No, not, not at all. I, I appreciate <coughs> the opportunity to discuss this with you. Mm -hmm. um, thank, thank you for you making the time. Your time, and um, I would just ask that the town remain as impartial as it can with the proceedings with that family, mm -hmm. um, negotiating otherwise, and stick to the zoning and the cleanup, and not make any further representations about what they can and can't do. And to the extent that you're willing to keep me informed about it, I'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. It's all reasonable. 
All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Bobby. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. All right. So we are going to move on to Chuck. Sorry, it's a little later than we expected, but uh, we're going to move on to the town road report. If you don't mind. Well, you have to. Ask Alfie. It's, up, it's, 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 up, it's up to you guys. You're both here, so you know. I'm, I'm, I know it's a, it's it's a shared duty at this point, mm -hmm. but yeah, Alfie, if you'd like to give us just uh, sort yeah, of. So we've just been been working in the shop a lot. Uh, we worked on the Comex box uh, that you guys approved last mm -hmm. meeting. It's all set. It's being filled a little bit every day uh, <laughs> as we clean the shop out. Uh, we have, I, I bought some grates for the floor drains, that was a complaint by the, by the insurance company, so I've got those in place. Did uh, you talk to Brandy at all about whether that would be paid for under that grant? Uh, I did not. Okay, so mention it when she comes back. I thought it was just uh, This was the insurance company right. went through and... Yeah, and they said you could buy some signs with lights on them, and yeah. some of them, I forget what else. They bought some new desks at <laughs> the office, and yeah, I can, I can ask all out of that six thousand dollars. I don't know if there's any any of it left, but right. it seems like that's what the grant was for, was to pay for those things that they recommended. Yeah, yeah. Mhm. Mm uh, today I started building a a metal rack for all the uh, plow blades and greater mm -hmm. blades and whatnot that are sort of leaned up against the building inside wall. So that's another thing that, that, that he was, was recommended, that the, yeah. those things not be leaning there so they could get, so right. that's another that, thing that might be That's another thing on. that was on the list, the, the, the checklist from the insurance company. Mm -hmm. So Ed Rowell has started today, mm -hmm. was his first day. Uh, he was able to get his physical, so I think work house in place. Mm -hmm. So I'll work him part-time as we need him. And, um, and he's, uh, Robin, you got him on the drug list here? Mm -hmm. Just waiting for a date. <laughs> a date? Right. What do you mean? So they can come test him. Oh, they don't have to test him. What do you mean? Free employment, they have to. Really? Of course Free they employment? Absolutely. Really? He's going to have a CDL or since he's going to be tested? Well, I thought they did that as part of the CDL thing. I mean, and then he goes into the rotation for the uh, random right. testing. Well, the, the DLT physical does not test for drugs. No. Yeah. Right. No. no. They do take a urine sample, but it's, mm -hmm. it's only for diabetes and, and yeah. other chronic conditions. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's all I can think of. I mean, we've been, we're, we're ready for snow. I mean, the only mm -hmm. other thing I might do is, is start putting wings on, but there's not mm -hmm. a huge rush for that. Yeah. So, so trucks are, trucks are pretty much ready to go. Yes. Yeah, I did notice there was two trucks that were inspections were out, so I made an appointment. One of them is out to Hartwick now. Um, hopefully, there's no nothing failing it. Then, well, they both went to Charlie Bush, so they should be yeah. in good shape. Yeah, I think they were looked over. Yeah. And we, I looked them over, checked all the lights and whatnot. So I don't think there's going to be anything, anything major. Uh, the next one that will go will be the, the little low pro that needs a sticker also, but that's that's new. It's, it's basically, mm -hmm. yeah. That very low mile, so it shouldn't be anything like that one either. Pretty much as good as it's going to get. It's just one of those things that I don't want to, you know, be stuck with in the middle of the snowstorm, mm -hmm. you know, try to get With a truck you can't. Yeah. 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 Uh, Do we have a date for salt delivery? Uh, they told me it would be this week, so I expect okay. it either today or tomorrow. Cool. Um, I'm sorry, a date for what? Salt. Delivery, okay. Yeah, chloride delivery. Yeah. <laughs>
And does that just come in one delivery or? Uh, it comes, one. Yeah, yeah, on a ten wheeler. Ten wheeler. One ten. So. Mm -hmm. And so that's all we can fit into mm -hmm. the shed. Yep. So one load. Uh, I think I think they're a little behind because everything was slow in the contract process mm -hmm. and all that. So now mm -hmm. everybody's. Now this contract <laughs> is in, everybody's mm -hmm. getting there, you know, trying to get their salt mm -hmm. filled, so, um, I might give them a call tomorrow just to see if we're, you know, see what, if they have a, mm -hmm. a arrival date, but uh, they didn't tell me it would be this, this kind of week, so. Okay. And we've got enough, we've got a couple loads there anyways to get started with, so we're not in dire straits, but I, I am, a little bit concerned too. I'd be, I'd feel much better if we had. A if, it was, there. if it was, if it was there. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Other than that, unless there's questions, I don't have much else. To... No. I don't have any. The only thing I did, and I told Alfie today, that <clears throat> Paul Cerruti called me Friday mm -hmm. and wanted to know if the town crew could come up and dig test holes over here where the new fire station is going to be. And I told him if he could work around snowstorms that it probably wouldn't be a problem. But... So, yeah, it's up to it's the road really up to you guys. And, well, um, and now this property line deal with the town and the fire department. Yeah, I, I don't think you want to do it just yet. Got me a little bit twisted, so yeah. I wouldn't do it. I, 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 right. I, they got to wait <laughs> yeah, until we does. figure this out. It, yeah. Why are they waiting now until it's almost time for the ground to freeze? Well, probably because they realize they need to do it now, or, or it's too <laughs> early before it's too late. Before the ground does freeze. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in Fisher Auto Parts when he called me, and I answered the phone, and I should have waited until afterwards and talked to him, but mm -hmm. I. Didn't feel that I could say a lot in Fisher Auto, but mm -hmm. they're worried about spending a thousand dollars getting an excavator up there. But they turn around and doing a, a survey on that lot after you'd had one done. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's I, we need to improve mm -hmm. the relationship with the fire department. So, yeah, I think first thing you ought to do is request see what they got for money stored away. Mm -hmm. I wonder no. if it's Brandy has given them their $65,000 for this year. Well, maybe not because but by the time all the taxes are in, she'll probably have to hand that over and they haven't done anything to spend it yet. Well, that's, yeah. But how they spend it is up to them. It's up to them. We don't control yeah. that once we've allocated it. Right, I realize but that, but they, you know. We can't withhold that. <laughs> We can't. <laughs> was that for the fire station you mean? Yeah, there's sixty-five thousand dollars for this year. It's eighty-five thousand dollars. Eighty-five thousand. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah it's you, you know. Sit in their account or sit in ours. It's a mm -hmm. strange, a strange relationship right at the moment. I think, and it would be nice to resolve it because it's all the same town. Well, the part that gets that bothers me the most is is they used to wash the aprons in town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the foot of Cabot Road, Town Farm Road, South Woodbury, mm -hmm. out here, and they stopped doing it. They won't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to use our truck to blow wood chips into over here. Mm -hmm. Now they want mm -hmm. the excavator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just cleaned out the uh, hydrant over here for them. Mm -hmm. So, you would think it's not. It doesn't seem to me though like that. There, it's a pretty goddamn one-sided deal. It can appear that way. Yep. It can. Well, I, I'm being tactful <laughs> on camera here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, we should probably wait and have the rest of this conversation when we actually have. Except I'm not going to be here. I'm going. I just sort of voiced it right now. No, that's fine. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you voiced it. Um, what are they test? What are they digging for? Well, Gold, I guess. I mean, if they're, if, I'm, if they're, I'm assuming that it's probably fuel. Fuel. Contamination of fuel. Oh I'm, God. I'm guessing. Mm. I mean, that's yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if they're doing something like that, they're going to have to have 
um, contractor do it anyways? If they're doing test holes for like well, foundation and stuff like that, you think they want to have their? If it's hazardous. If it's hazardous material, it's hazardous material, it ha hazardous material. They have to have a licensed uh, yeah. contractor. Contractor there to, yeah. to to oversee the sampling process. They're going to be, yeah. a, a but we don't know if that's do what the they're sampling. They're yeah. just looking to have the digging done. Yeah, we well, don't know what they want. So, test so the reality is, for. I mean, until we understand the ramifications, the answer is probably no. They start digging around that that power pole where they want that land. They might wish they not. Well, let, let's let's wait till we yep. have so a discussion. We're gonna, so we're gonna we're gonna cease this conversation until we have the opportunity to talk with. If you would yeah. like, Chance yeah. Bayat and Paul Suri. I am happy to provide remote access to the next meeting if you would like to be there. I but, wish you would. Okay, I will. There's no problem with that. Okay. In fact, we should probably just it worked out well in the past. So they they couldn't make it tonight. So they said they could make it on the twenty eighth. Right. They so both we'll had meetings tonight, so they weren't able to come. Mm -hmm. So well, so we'll. They knew have, I was leaving on the third day too. That well, could be it's, true. It, it's well, we don't know that for sure. Mm -hmm. They didn't say that. You can you can, uh, you, can you can you can voice your concerns. We'll make sure that you can be here digitally, right. okay. and we'll get the biggest screen that we can. Mm -hmm. You can stand up right close to it. I don't need no screen. <laughs> <laughs> Catch me on a good day. I won't even need. I can make a blur you might audio. Need audio. <laughs> <laughs> Just need audio. We can provide <laughs> plenty of volume for that. Um, we do need to. I think Brandy would appreciate it if the select board approve the road salt contract. I did sign it in order to have this thing happen expediently, mm -hmm. um, but for Brandy and the auditors that she has to deal with, I bet she would love to have something in the select board uh, minutes that the select board actually approved the, this year's salt contract. Can you tell a little bit about the contract? Yes. So. Um, the, con the only option we really had after um, several little explorations was with Barrett Trucking Company um, and they get their salt from Cargill and they were given the figure of $88 per ton. Um, so that's what the contract um, for this year is for. It's with Barrett Trucking. Um, they're based, uh, I think, over in the Burlington area somewhere. Barrett Trucking. Barrett Trucking, mm -hmm. yeah. They and took they, over the Dubois construction site, so that's... That's right, that's they, why... They, is that they're where based they... out of Winooski, I think it is. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. To me, Winooski, Essex, Burlington, it's all kind yeah. of one place. Yeah, um, yeah so they took, they took over um, Dubois construction. They took over the, all of the different um, road stop contracts that Dubois oversaw mm -hmm. with American Rock Sox. Mm -hmm. um, Unfortunately, Barrett Trucking has dealt in the past with Cargill, and so that's the company that they um, were dealing with. Um, so, and the price that they negotiated with um, Cargill was eighty-eight dollars a ton. So, um, and that seemed to be the only option that we that we really had. The state didn't have any kind of state contract that they were uh, willing to share with towns like, like they've done in the past. Um, Although we've tended to go with uh, Dubois and American Rock Salt because the price was Australia. usually cheaper than the state contract. Um, mm. so, so I guess I would make a motion that the select board approve the, um, this year's um, uh, road salt contract with direct trucking um, for $88 a ton. I'll second that motion. $88 a ton. A second no, motion. I said how, how much? How many tons? Yeah. 175 is what the contract okay. is for, yeah. um, and whether we'll use that much or not depends so on the winter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need to yeah. I'll second that motion. Did you second it already? Yeah, and they don't hold us to that. It's just, a, it's just yeah. an estimate, it's just an so estimate. they have a sense of, you know, how much we'll, we'll want. Mm -hmm. So if, if we don't buy 175 tons, they don't required to us. pay for it. Yep. And, uh, and if we need more, hopefully there will be more. And hopefully it stays at 88. Right. <laughs> it will stay at 88, yeah. That's it. Well, <laughs> no so, but who knows in this world, it's in this different. time. It's not <laughs> that straightforward anymore. Uh, Barrett's a pretty straightforward company. I, okay. I don't think you'll have any trouble. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're just the trucking it. They well, still have yeah. to get it. So. But they are, they are able to use the, the <coughs> depot that uh, Dubois 
construction had in somewhere in Barrie, I think. It's on, I think it's on the right Barrie. Montpelier. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's right by the road. Between Montpelier and Middlesex. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that was a motion that was seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So, motion approved for the 2022-2023 winter salt contract. So the other thing on the road report is the CV fiber installation. They're looking for permission to um, put in underground fiber in different uh, town right of ways, different roads. Um, and unfortunately, I just, the, the woman that I've been in contact with, Kara Kotecki, um, sent me an email at 540. I was probably already here that she would like to attend the meeting tonight. Um, and I was going to set up a remote access so she could do that, but um, kind of finding out that she was willing to and able to come um, mm -hmm. after the fact. So, um, but I know um, the roads that she mentioned um, were somewhat puzzling to me a bit also, and Diana had some comments um, and questions which I did forward to Karen, and she mentioned that she would get back to us. Um, however, she didn't do that before tonight's uh, meeting, but. Um, basically, can she be invited to our next select board meeting? She can. Or and, and do we need I mean, to I, get this together before that? Because um, they're not going to do the work. They, no. Yeah, they need they need permission in order to start the work. Um, they're not going to start the work now, are they? Yeah, they're ready to they're ready to start. <laughs> they're ready to go. Yeah, um, they do. They are waiting for um, you know the above ground most of the installation of the fiber will be on the poles so they are working with uh, Hardwick Electric to some of the poles need to be replaced with longer poles so there's clearance between the different companies that use their poles um, CV Fiber has contracted with is paying Hardwick Electric to put in the longer poles where they're needed but they haven't um, started doing that yet right. Um, and so th this is another part where they aren't able to use poles um, and so they'll be putting it underground um, and a, g a good part of it will be within the town right of way for um, and what are the roads Michael? so the roads mentioned um, by Karen were, was Rathburn Road um, 1850 feet that so, just, just seems so odd to me that well, yeah, and then um, Scribner Road is another one mentioned, um, said 2,869 feet, and then there are pole attachments, and then there would be another 1,000 feet where there would be no poles. A Keene Farm Road, um, 600 feet, didn't say where along Keene Farm Road. Dog Pond Road, 1,351 feet, again, I'm not sure where along Dog Pond Road. And then North Road, which is the one that's most puzzling to me, 7,000 feet. 7,000 feet? Yeah. And I don't know whether they're trying to bring in, dig line all the way into the one camp on East Long that where people live year round and there, there's no electricity there. There's no know, electricity there. So I mentioned this, I was at a, the CV Fiber board meeting last week and I mentioned that some of these roads seem, didn't seem logical that they would even be wanting to put cable in there. Um, and Diana brought up a number of questions, which um, you're more than welcome to share. Mm -hmm. And I did send those to Karen, but I haven't mm -hmm. received a response. So it seems to me that what we ought to do is um, try to make sure that Karen... Is it intending our next meeting? Yes. And then w that we can ask her these questions, yeah. or maybe we can resolve these questions. Um, mm -hmm. I also would appreciate an actual map. I mean, you she did send that. maps. I didn't get the oh. map. I think I, I did forward that stuff on to you guys, but I don't know if the maps came. Yeah, came I, with I get the maps. We got the maps. Uh, get, uh, okay. Uh, with uh, I don't know. She which. just sent me. A, I just sent her when I opened up my computer for this part mm -hmm. of the meeting. Um, she that was when I found out that she wanted me to send her the link to the meeting. But that was the first time that she's informed me that she mm -hmm. was going to be coming. Um, and then she did respond yeah. to that. Let me see what she said. Um, I can find it. Okay. Um. Okay, I'm sorry, I thought I told you I would be happy to attend. Um, 
so I'm, I'll be in touch with her tomorrow. But as I guess as a general rule, um, and I'll ask our Alfie this question, are you okay with them um, as long as you have input on what they're doing um, to, to be putting in, um, uh, you know, bearing mm -hmm. a fiber cable along the, in the town road right of way? Or would you want to know where and what, what their intentions Absolutely. are? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. How are you okay. going to change the culvert? Yeah, we need to know uh, where, okay. they're, where they're planning on putting it. Uh, my preference, if at all, would be on that side of the, like off the travel portion. Mm -hmm. Of yep. the road. Okay. Uh, How deep do they bear that stuff? I don't know. It says here somewhere um, CV Fiber is proposing to install <laughs> underground fiber encased in conduit within the town right of way in Woodbury. CV will plow, trench, or bore three inch wide and three feet deep okay. along roads and lay two two inch conduits on top of each other within two by three with two by three hand holes approximately every 500 feet the hand holes it's h-o-l-e-s will be flush with the ground if ledge is present a small excavator will be used well yeah there ain't no way they're going to go down north road for seven thousand feet right the ledge sticking three, right up to the road the ledge is in the road everywhere mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I was my understanding at some point that they said that they were only going to try to serve places that have electricity already. There's no electricity out there. Well, she's off the grid. She's got generators and solar panels. Oh, yeah, but there's no, but yeah, off grid. It, yeah, the one person who's out there probably doesn't even care about it. Well, yeah, I mean, I but, did uh, I question the North Road also and... Um, Seven thousand. It just doesn't seem like that's worth. Well, I mean, they're trying to get it to everybody and not worry about so much about the investment. But um, seems like they, there's a, a different road that they could. The, um, the other one that confuses me is Scribner Road, going all the way up around the back. The part that's not even plowed. The class four section of Scribner Road that goes up and around and comes out Logtown. I don't know why they. Have to do that because they. No, they does they, somebody live there? No. No. Terry no, Cushing, but no, he's no, not. Not on that side. At, uh, but it's like, like, why can't they just keep going down? Well, that's why it would be nice to have um, this person Meadow Road. here with us. With us, and these maps suck. Just yeah. to be totally fair. <laughs> right. I mean, not. I'm. I'm. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, I'm. I'm sure that they're well intentioned, but they're parcel snapshot maps. Yeah, really. There's nothing cohesive. Uh, it's impossible to understand the distribution and how it relates to other parts right. of yeah. our town system mm -hmm. and the broader surroundings. Yeah, if we could um, see the whole map. We can't. You know. So you can't make. You can't make a justification based on. That's why I thought that there was actually more than that. These aren't maps. Really. They're satellite photos with. Mm -hmm. Because what's the what's the state recommendation on ditches? How deep you got to dig down? Two feet. Two feet. Two feet. Below the road surface. Yeah. Mm hmm You think they can't even get two feet? I'd be goddamn surprised if most places in town they could. Yeah. Mm hmm You've been around here with your stone meter. How often is that gonna happen? <laughs> Doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's why <laughs> part of the problem with this with the fiber is that it's not repairable. Mm -hmm. So if, if if our excavator hits it, it's to the whole line the whole is line is toast. You can't wow! Patch, patch really? No. Oh my! And that's mm -hmm. the problem with fiber. It's, uh, it's, it's a great it's, thing, but, but it's totally disjunctive. So uh, with with dig safe is if if there are towns that have CV uh, have the high speed internet cable fiber buried, is that all registered with dig safe? Uh, Dig Safe really notifies mean. some utilities, not all. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. So it might not, that would have to be a verification. Okay, yeah. yeah. I know which I'm mean. sure would be a, a cost to CG Fiber mm -hmm. to get onto that. Mm -hmm. to and that it would, you also are going to want to make, uh, have a stipulation in there that the county is responsible for hitting it. Well, mm -hmm. they, yeah, I mean, I don't know what our memorandum of understanding all the fine points are in that, but, um, uh, Mm. I mean, there. I don't think that um, 
I mean, they have a lot of money to work with, so I don't think you know expense on their end is a concern. They're just trying to they're trying to get this started. Mm -hmm. um, and Woodbury has been slated to be uh, is one of the towns where they're they're doing the first round of of implementation. Um, but it you know it. If I like, I'm going to contact this person tomorrow. What do I need to let them know? Can you guys kind of help me come up with? We obviously have some questions about the roads that they've chosen. Um, well, let me write that down, and then and the distances along some of those roads, yeah. given the population. And where I mean, they just mentioned a road, and they mentioned a number of feet, but we have no idea where. Although I guess the map sort of shows this. Kind of shows yeah, this. it's hard to tell where. It's really hard to, to yeah. tell exactly. So, and then, um, mm -hmm. Alfie, you mentioned if they're going to be using digging in the town right away, it would be on the not in the road itself, but in in the off off the travel off, off the, travel the travel way. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I'm surprised with all the people they've had running around on the road that they've. Well, that's part of the problem. <laughs> There are contractors that some of them, a lot of them were not from around here. Not from around here, so you know they might have made these recommendations without a clue mm. about mm. who lives there. Or um. well, the one I talked to, the one, of the first ones that are around here that ended up screwing up, and then there was another group come in. They had a list of poles mm -hmm. that they had to go around and check. And check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So somebody was setting them. In that direction, it was well. Yeah, they. Direction. They. Um, I think Hardwick Electric did finally put together an inventory of their poles, which they mm -hmm. used, um, and that's what they've done with Washington Electric. Also, is the, um, you know, the Washington Electric had an inventory of their poles, and they used that inventory to to know where to go to check them out. Right. Um, and then they had to wait for Hardwick Electric, and actually, I think they paid to have the inventory of the poles in Woodbury. CV Fiber paid for the inventory of the Hardwick Electric poles in really? Woodbury so that they could get this uh, planning. Hardwick Electric wouldn't planning. get it to uh, Hardwick Electric didn't have, didn't it, have it. It. <laughs> an inventory. <laughs> wow. So, um, so yeah. there are a lot of poles noticed on, noticed yeah. on these maps. Yeah. So, um, so I have a question, and I know that other select board members have a question about the actual roads chosen. And Diana has uh, typed some of those out, and I did send those to this person. And then we want to make sure that they're going to be putting the cable in. Um, and then I'm going to write down to consult with the road commissioner before with any of the work. Um, this is Granberry Meadow. Mm -hmm. And they got all these poles, but then I don't know whether they stop, whether there aren't any poles along that part of the road. Well, they might go through the through the woods or through the you know they don't all follow the road. All right. Yeah, I don't know. Any mm -hmm. anything else that I should? And then obviously we would like her to come to, to the next to meeting. show up at the next meeting. Okay. No. It's too bad she, that she didn't communicate this to me quicker. Um, well, but anyway, it's definitely that's, too late that's now. water over the dam. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else that I should um, share with her at all? So I have questions about the roads chosen, um, that any, any of the ditching work um, that it, um, there be a, a consult, um, probably an on-site consult, I would imagine, with the road commissioner, and that um, any of the um, buried cable be in the uh, not in the traveled portion of the road. Um, now, no, we have a culvert inventory, right? What did they we have take a, that into account? We have an outdated culvert inventory. Well, yeah, a few years ago. But yeah, it, it's pretty pretty up to date. We've been bringing it up to date too. We've got yeah. culverts everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, that's. I would think that's got to be taken into consideration. Yeah, yeah. And I think you've got to tell them that they need to have a minimum of three feet in depth because you go along clean culvert, uh, clean ditches out. 
-hmm. you're gonna, you're gonna I think they did mention that they would they bury did them. They say three, three feet, feet, but I thought yeah. that was if they can get uh, it. Right. Right. Well, apparently they they, they think they think they, they say they, they can. Think they so. can. Well, well, I think there's gonna be said they, they buried that sewer pipe down South yeah. Woodbury. Well, that wasn't uh, CV fiber, though. That's true. <laughs> it, so one, it's one thing to make sure to ask them is to expensive proposition. How they would get on to the dig safe registry. Okay. Because it might not just be the town digging that mm -hmm. finds it. It could be a private contractor. Right. Okay. Somebody, yeah, yeah like trying to dig that sewer pipe. Yeah. Get, yeah. Okay. And they probably already have a plan for that. They do seem to be kind of on the ball with this stuff, but um, I am a little surprised at the roads that they chose. But. Well, hopefully okay. we'll, we'll get some justification mm -hmm. from it. Well, I will, I will contact her tomorrow and we'll definitely t make sure that she's at the next meeting. And sounds like you will be here too, Chuck, so... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty much up to Alfie. I'm okay, just yeah, no, it is, it is an Alfie, Alfie's <laughs> Well, we're used to it now. <laughs> Well, I <laughs> <laughs> We've always appreciated that you have not that, kept your mouth that shut. You have an opinion and you're willing to say it. <laughs> How do you think he'd do with that callus board? Uh, 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 <laughs> I wouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 I got an idea to be two choice words, so I didn't know that. <laughs> okay. Alright. So. No. So, oh, I so guess I we're, could give. We're, we basically did our CV fiber update. No, thing. actually, no. No? Oh, well. Except for the. Oh. Yeah, I think. Um, CV Fiber is definitely ready to start laying fiber in town um, and they are kind of waiting on Hardwick Electric um, to get some poles that, that are needed. Um, so um, the other part of that update is appointments to the CV Fiber board. Um, right at the moment um, I am listed as an alternate Altern alternate. Alternate. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't quite get my tongue around that word. Um, and uh, I think at a select board meeting we changed that for me to be the um, the primary. The no, primary. We offered you that, and you said no, okay. thank you. I did. Yeah, oh. to be the permanent alternate. Okay. Well, it seems like I am the permanent. Okay. The well, I'd like to <laughs> nominate you to be the uh, full time. Okay. Um, what do you call it? The full representative. representative. Okay, and then um, I'll second the nomination. Okay. okay. <laughs> All in favor? All right. I won't vote because uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. um, so <laughs> <don't> do it. <laughs> <laughs> Skip Lindsay has been listed out as the alternate. Um, I did contact Skip, and um, he's never really. Uh, he was kind of, I think, sort of surprised that he was the alternate. He was, yeah. uh, and he says that he has a conflict with the Tuesday. It's the second Tuesday of every month that they meet. So mm -hmm. he, yeah. but um, I can't do it either. Somebody from CV Fiber asked if Jane Noel Lorenda would be willing to serve as the alternate. And I asked Jane if she would be willing to do that. And she mm -hmm. said yes. Mm -hmm. So um, okay. I was hoping that the select board could appoint her. Um, as the uh, alternate rep to CV Fiber. I'll make oh. that motion. I'll oh, second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So Jane is our alternate mm -hmm. rep for CV Fiber. Yeah, and she did attend the meeting last week too, just to kind of check it out. So. Great. I know they really wanted somebody who was going to be an active member, you know, and not right. zoom into the meeting. So I'm. Well, they do their meetings totally by Zoom, so. <laughs> so <laughs> um, really? Yeah, this is the yeah. CVRPC. Oh, okay. All of our meetings are yeah, remote. Same, same for me. Do you still them. have a conflict with the meeting? I do have a conflict, but I've been able to work it out where um, their meeting starts at 6, so I usually stay on till about 7. And they usually last mm -hmm. about an hour, maybe a little mm -hmm. bit longer. And then I've let the Regional Planning Commission know of the conflict and... Um, mm -hmm. Usually, so I join that meeting as soon as I can. Okay. So for now, it's working out. If somebody else did want to be the um, full-time 
rep to CD Fiber um, or to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, I would happily let go of <sighs> one of them or mm -hmm. at some point maybe even both. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, to me, as a member of the Planning Commission and just with what people, one of the main things that came up that people really wanted to see in town was uh, access to high-speed internet. Um, That's why we don't So this money, seems like a very important thing. Mm -hmm to be taking part in, um, so. Well, we appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Any other updates, Michael? No. All right. No. Any other business oh. from anyone? Well, what's this one about Westwood Bay Cemetery? Well, I was just gonna report that um, the uh, Commission, Cemetery Commission asked that uh, the well shield be put on, well, yeah, it's a well shield, I guess. There's a state law that says you, you can't bury bodies within 250 feet of a domestic water well, source. Right, so right, which is across the road that, and just yeah. right at so the So that right took up out about half of the area that they had donated, but and they also wanted all the lots in that section to be half size. Um, so the, uh, the surveyor's working on that. Uh, I've talked with Chris Green and he's going to be working on preparing the deed. And he's going to talk with the surveyor about, you know, there's no deed or any information on the old cemetery at all. Who owns what? So Chris is going to try to find a way that he can do the, the whole thing in one deed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Probably I mean, was part of the same property at one time. But yeah, way there is a there. plot plan. That's, oh yeah, there's a little. You know, yeah, it's a little, pretty lame. Yeah, <laughs> it shows who's buried where, yeah. I guess. But that's about it. That's about yeah. it. it. Doesn't give dimensions and doesn't. So give anyway, that's that's the finally <laughs> starting to happen on that. Uh, and then I think they're waiting to do the final, I don't know if they've done the final grading, but putting up the fence and things like that, they're probably not going to do that until after the deed is passed. And Bear has picked out which lots he wants for his compensation. I think he asked for four lots. And so. Okay. And Cranberry Hello. Meadow, we got the grant letter and it came with all kinds of conditions, things that I was not prepared, you know, that I wish they had told me before. So I sent them an email. I said, what the heck? You know, <laughs> they didn't tell me all this stuff. And, and they wrote back and they said, oh, we'll help you. We'll do this and that and the other thing. So anyways, that's going to be more, more work. More, yeah. Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully it won't all be for me. Yeah. Meanwhile, the owner is antsy to get it off, you know, get their mm -hmm. money, but, mm -hmm. oh well. What can we do? Okay. Um. So, the I, I put here for the executive session really just to talk about the status of the Daigle, and I think we've been there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like we've been there <laughs> for 45 minutes yeah. <laughs> or better actually yeah um, so I don't th I, I don't feel the need to go into executive session based on the mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. things that, that we've is, talked is there about. anything else involved with that um, the litigation that that we need to know about in executive session or is it Pretty, I don't pretty think much. so. Okay. You know, I was just I've been keeping track of it because the town is paying for this enforcement action and we have to do our part. So mm -hmm. I've been trying to keep the lawyer involved, you mm -hmm. know, notified that we don't want to pay him to come out here every month to see mm -hmm. what the status is. So mm -hmm. I've been doing that for him and I thought there was, it looked like something was finally happening, but then just came another to a standstill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea. So at the hearing today, they have got a month extension to. Right. Okay. Yeah. So right. we'll yeah. see what what it looks like in a month. It's going to be at a standstill fairly soon. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So I'll take a motion to adjourn. I would like to say oh, one thing. Excuse oh. me. Oh, sorry, Mr. I Harvey. would like to give Chuck a big thank you for the work oh. he has done on the roads over the last few years. Well, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate much it. Much agreed. Yeah, mm -hmm. much appreciated. Yeah. Thanks for all the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Tremendous amount of work. Yeah. If you want to come back as the sub road commissioner. <laughs> yeah, maybe next summer. Next summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let me fix this over. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. When do you leave? You're here. Thursday. Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, oh, there's a big snow. <laughs> if my dump truck went down in clouds, it would be tomorrow. Uh -huh. I yeah. gotta get that back. You yeah. take it with you? No. Yeah. No, they're broken oh. spring and needs to be oh. fixed. Mm -hmm. I bet they want to be paid for spring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think um, you walked into kind of a uh, less than perfect situation of sorts, and I really do appreciate your being the dealing with both the select board and the road crew and and. I th I was, I was yeah, yeah, <laughs> a couple of other people that will remain unmentioned, but yeah, I mean, I was really grateful for <clears throat> for what you did. And well, grateful. it turned out pretty good. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Well, yeah. I certainly learned a lot from you, so I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I really did. I learned a ton. <laughs> yeah, we'll miss your input. We'll, we'll, we'll miss you, but uh, you're, you're, welcome, you're, here, you're yeah. welcome anytime. Yes, yeah, we do. Thank you yes, for we do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Worked out well. Bonus enough. I am paying for spring. <laughs> okay, with that, I will take a motion to adjourn at 7:54. This to adjourn. Wood, wood bar select so board. Okay, we are adjourned.